If you're the sort of person that always packs a first aid kit before venturing into the great outdoors, good for you. If you take a slightly different first aid kit with you, depending on whether you're out in the mountains, in the woods, or whatever you're doing, good for you. If you ensure that the contents of your first aid kit is commensurate with your knowledge, skills, training, and the types of injuries and ailments that you're likely to encounter, good for you. If you ensure that you're only putting first aid equipment in your first aid bag, actually, you might be missing out on a trick there. Unless you're incredibly accident prone, I'm willing to bet that you rarely go into your first aid kit. Now that's a good thing from one perspective because it means, well, let's be honest, that you're not sustaining any injuries or ailments whilst you're in the outdoors that require you to go into that first aid kit. That's a positive. From another perspective though, it can be quite negative because you could be missing some really important clues. Those clues that I'm talking about are really the condition of the equipment that's in that first aid kit. First aid kit contents are quite fragile. They're sometimes wrapped quite delicately. So the ceilings on, on plasters, on dressings, they can, they can rip and expose the contents inside. Blister packs can burst. Medication can go out of date. Ointments and, and tubes of things can burst and the cream can go everywhere. So there's all sorts of things that can very, very easily degrade the, the viability of the content of your first aid kit. And the sad fact is that no matter how many times I've stood on this channel <laughs> myself and talked about setting yourself reminders so that periodically you go and check your first aid kit, the reality is that I personally always forget to do it. Whenever that notification pops up on my phone or I notice it on the calendar on the wall, I'm always in the middle of doing something else. I always think to myself, oh, I'll do that later. And of course, later never arrives. So whilst I'm certainly not suggesting, you know, don't set yourself reminders to check the content of your medical equipment, I still set reminders. What I am suggesting is that this is possibly a more everyday way, a way that is more likely to guarantee that you're going to see the contents of your first aid kit than just setting a reminder. And that's what I want to share with you now. For the past six or seven months, certainly since the beginning of this year, I've stopped thinking of this as a first aid kit. And I've started to think of this as a care kit. And there's an important difference between the two. Instead of just putting first aid kit and equipment in here, which means that I only go into here when I need to use that first aid kit and equipment, which we've already said is quite infrequently, I've started to put other kit and equipment in here for more of a care perspective. Craig's care kit, Craig's care kit, that chips off the tongue, doesn't it? Very lovely feely, very, very touchy feely. Craig's care kit is what this is now known as. This still contains all of the first aid equipment it previously did. Now I have previously done a video on the uh, first aid kit that I take into the woods, bushcrafting, but this is subtly different. If you're interested in finding out what I carry from a medical perspective in the hills, when I'm climbing, mountaineering out in the hills, then drop me a comment in the uh, comments below. Let me know that you'd be interested in seeing a video on this. And if enough people want to see it, then I'll put a video together. But this still contains all of the first aid equipment I'd normally bring with me. It also contains, though, my care kit. It contains a toothbrush, which folds inside its own handle to reduce the bulk. It contains a tub of toothpaste. This isn't a purpose-built tub, it's just a small plastic tub, and I've squeezed in toothpaste from a normal tube. That has lasted me seven days assisting on a bushcraft course, brushing twice a day. And there was still a smidgen left, so it's, it's certainly good for a couple of overnighters out on the hills. I also carry my toilet kit with me, some, a pack of small tissues there, my toilet kit. And I also carry in there, from a personal care perspective, some soap leaves um, to enable me to wash myself if I'm out for any more than a day or so. That all goes in there. What I've now done is I've increased the frequency in which I go into this bag. Previously, I went in when I needed to administer some first aid, or when I remembered and took notice of my notifications to go in and check stuff. Now, I can guarantee that I'm going in 
twice a day to brush my teeth. If nothing else, I'm going into there. I can then start to spot if things are degrading, if things are bursting, if, the, if there's powder floating around because some of my painkillers have burst or something like that. I've increased the frequency in which I go into there, therefore I've increased the likelihood of spotting if there's anything wrong with my first aid kit. What I also add into there is not just care kit for me, Craig's care kit, but I also add into there my repair kit for my equipment. So I guess you could call that Craig's kit care kit. Craig's kit care kit. This is tripping off the tongue. Yeah, I'm on a roll today, folks. If you want to see a video of what I carry in my repair kit, then again, let me know in the comments below. But suffice to say, that doesn't get used any more frequently than me brushing my teeth, I promise you. But it probably gets used a little more often than if I'm just going in there to look at my first aid kit. So that goes in there as well. So that's now changed my thinking from it, this just being a first aid kit and just something that I go into when I need to or when I remember to, to something that I'm going into very, very regularly. Just changing the way that I think. I'm not carrying any more kit than I did previously. I always carried a kit repair kit. I always carried sort of a personal hygiene kit. It was just separate to this. By putting them together, one, I'm reducing on, on different stuff sacks I need to use and lock bags, but more importantly, as I've said, I'm increasing the time and the frequency that I go into this, which is no bad thing when you consider how quickly and easily first aid kit can erode. So that's how I've rethought my approach to carrying first aid kit. Is there anything in there that resonates with you? Is there anything that makes you think, that's a good idea, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that, I like that thinking. Have you already got a foolproof way of checking in with your first aid kit that you always remember to do? Share, please share that with me because I haven't discovered a foolproof way of doing it if it's just a first aid kit. Do you think this is a terrible idea? Is there a problem with what I'm doing here? Let me know in the comments below. As always folks, thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to comment below if you wanna see the contents of my first aid equipment and my kit repair kit. Drop um, a comment in the comments below. Take care folks, stay safe.